in order to use the silhouette machines or any cutting machine, you have to have a vector file. If you are working with a JPEG or a PNG, it's not going to provide you with the cut lines you need. You must have a vector image. We're talking an SVG, a silhouette file, a DFX, something along those lines. I am going to show you today how to take a PNG or a JPEG and turn it into a vector file so that you can use it with the silhouette cameo or portrait or the curio, which is coming out. I have placed my order. It will be on its way soon. So excited. Anyway, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette and you found your way to Silhouette success. We are all about learning the software and the machines, using them efficiently to create some amazing projects. I hope that you are going to join our little community. We're growing every day. It is super, super exciting. So let's do this. Okay, in Silhouette Studio, I have already brought in three different PNG files. This first one here has a transparent background. It is one solid color. Nothing too fancy about this one. Next, we have a PNG with a transparent background. It does have two different colors. And last, we have a PNG with a white background that is very, very detailed. We are going to work with each one of them separately. But before we begin that, we're going to go over to this little gear down on the bottom. This is your preference panel. You want to open that up and head over to the defaults tab. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you will see panel mode. I am going to open up multiple panel mode here. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to close out the page setup because my page is already set up the way I want it. I've got a 12 by 12 mat and I have turned the grid off so that it's not in our way today. In order to convert JPEGs or PNGs over to cut files, you're going to want to mainly use two panels. If we set it to multiple panel mode, we can open up both at the same time, which is going to allow us to work more efficiently in the software. So I am going to grab my trace panel and I am also going to open up the image effects panel. Let's start with the easy one and work our way up to the more difficult ones. Drag this one on to the mat. Now in order to get the cut lines, you have to trace the image. But because this is such a light image, it's going to be difficult to trace like that. What you want to do is select the image, head over to the third tab, and you will see brightness, contrast, and saturation. We're going to bring the brightness all the way down. That light gray PNG is now a black and white image. Click Apply. And then it's going to be as simple as select trace area, draw your box around it. I can see that it's missing the little line for the spider web here. So let's increase our threshold just a bit until that lights up. There we go. We had to take it all the way up to 100, but it did finally trace it. And then just go ahead and click on trace. Now we can move the image away. Click on this, fill it in with black. I'm going to set them side by side and move over to the send panel real, real quick here. And you can see that the PNG image did not have cut lines. Once we traced it, it does have cut lines. And they are exactly the same. Now let's get rid of these. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them so that it doesn't bog down the software. Next, we're going to work on this. Again, it does have a transparent background, but we're going to be working with two different colors here. 
because we're working with two different colors, I am going to start off by duplicating this. I'm going to set one off to the side for just a minute. Now we're going to select this and we are going to, in our image effects panel, again, bring the brightness all the way down. Now our image is completely black and we can go ahead and select trace area and trace that. Let's switch this to black. And this will act as our bottom layer. We can get rid of this one. Bring this one onto the mat. Now this time we're going to do something just a little bit different. Instead of bringing the brightness all the way down, we are going to bring the brightness up. the contrast up, and the saturation all the way down. Now, as you can see, Spooky Vibes is now white, but we need it black in order for it to trace. So what we are going to do is we are going to click Apply, and then we're going to go to this tab here. It's Invert. We have a sliding scale for the inversion, and we are just going to bring that all the way up. Now our letters are black and the rest of it is white. So let's apply. This time we're going to grab our eyedropper. You can do select trace area as well, but I think it's a little more accurate because of these lines that we grab the eyedropper. Trace by color and just click on one of the letters. And then we're going to click on all areas. I'm just bumping this up slightly to make sure that I get all of the drips in there. I think that looks good. Now let's hit trace. We can move this away and delete this. We don't need that anymore. Let's turn this one to red. And we can line them right up. And that is now ready to cut as well. You'll want to select it and group it together, then you can move it off. Moving on to the last one. Like I said, this is the most complex image, but it's really not that much more difficult to trace. So let's get started. You want to select your image. In the Image Effects panel, you want to go to Gray Shade. That's the first tab. You want to bring that all the way up to 100. Now it's a black and white image. Click Apply. Now over in the Trace panel, we are going to select the regular trace. Select Trace Area and draw your box around your image. And as you can see, this is not going to be exactly what you want. So we're going to have to work with it just a bit. No worries. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to take the threshold all the way up. This is going to create a back layer for our design so that it will end up being two-toned. I am going to do trace. And I'm going to grab these cut lines, move them over here, and I'm going to fill that in with a light gray. Now we're going to work on the details just a bit. We're going to start off the same way. Select Trace Area, draw your box. Now we're going to go to High Pass, and we are going to turn that on. 
you can see how it's starting to pick up the colors a little bit differently here. Once you have that to where you want it, you want to start bumping up your threshold just a little bit at a time. Now it's picked up the entire background. That is absolutely not what we want. So let's go back down. And that is the most detail that we can pick up without grabbing the background as well. So let's hit trace. Move the image. Oops, I grabbed the outline. That's fine. Let's move the image away though. We are going to fill this in with black. Slide this back behind it. And now you have a two layer decal that looks very similar to the original photo. Let's grab these and group them together. Pull that off to the side. We're going to go through and do this one more time. Select trace area. We're going to start off with the background layer, bring the threshold all the way up again, and click on Trace. This is bogging my software down just a bit, so it's a little slow. I don't want to delete this one yet, though, because I want to, um, I want to compare the two in just a minute. So just bear with me. Let's select the gray color again. And move this one off over here. Select trace area, draw your box. Okay, this time we are not going to set the high pass as high. That looks good. Let's hit trace. Pull the original image away for just a minute. Fill this in with black. Slide this behind there. Group it together. Now you can see that if you were going to make a decal out of either one of these, it would look a lot like the original. It just depends on the amount of detail that you want to work with. This is going to be an easier cut. This will be a more difficult cut, but I, it's got a lot more detail. So the high pass and the threshold are really something that you want to play around with when you're working with an actual picture. If you want to watch more videos, then you're going to want to see this one here. If you're done for the day, go create something amazing, and I will see you in the next video.